thank you and uh, welcome. Um, a quick introduction. So um, the people that you have in this webinar is uh, Raphael Uber, Senior Consultant for Planning, Sashi, uh, Senior Solution Architect, and myself, uh, Lars Sondergaard, I'm the Global Practice Lead for the area of planning. Uh, we prepared the following agenda. So we will give you a quick introduction on uh, the topic of uh, master scheduling. Also, uh, we will show you the SAP IVP order-based planning. We will also do a system demo. Uh, at the end, we will sum the whole thing up and we will also leave you uh, room for um, Q&A and a short wrap-up. So if we go into the introduction, so the supply chain is at the heart of, uh, of every company. This is where uh, if we don't have a supply chain, we can't really deliver any goods to the customer. Now, the objective of supply chain planning is really to, uh, to make sure that, of course, you're going to have unforeseen disruptions uh, happening. You can't prevent that. People are going to get ill. Um, uh, things are not going to show up on time. But as you go moving closer and closer to execution, you should not be dealing with um, that we, you need to put a separate shift on, that you need to uh, go in and, and really struggle and, and just trying to react. You shouldn't be talking to a vendor about 20% uh, uh, more material. So as you're going through your different planning horizons, you need to eliminate the different problems that you can so that when you're getting to the execution, that you need to disrupt with somebody being ill and you need to ask somebody to take some overtime or what have you. If we talk about master scheduling, which is a topic today, here yeah, this is really what we call the holy grail because this is where um, we will take the planned demand and supply coming from our sales and operation planning process. And now this is gonna start mixing with actual demand and, and the, the supply to actual production. So again, this overlapping, this coming from plan to the actuals, this is what we would call the holy grail. So as you see up here, we have the liquid zone, the slushy zone and the frozen zone. This is the supply planning. So this is where we are slowly but certainly starting to constrain ourselves yeah, until the frozen zone where we have to start um, a building uh, and assembly on the last level. And again, here also on the responsive part, we have uh, the, the sold, the partially sold, and the unsold. Now, if we again look a bit further, is that the objective of master scheduling is really to be a buffer between the demand and the irregularities between demand and the production plan. So, because in production, we want to have a as smooth and as most organized and through that the cheapest way to actually produce. But again, the orders are not gonna come into uh, to your production plan. So master scheduling is here to buffer between the demand and the process and the production plan. And what are the, what are the goals? is of course we need to balance between demand and supply but at a mixed level at a detail level now we're not talking about volumes or anything like that now we're talking about the mix now what is it that we actually going to produce master scheduling is about to ensure that the plans are realistic it's about ensuring an efficient timing to improve the shipping times and of course also to measure the performance how are we actually doing Now, we talked about a little bit here to say, it's, it's important to not just say, how much are we gonna produce? It's also an answer to say, what is it that we're gonna produce? Yeah, what is it that we're expecting? So it's basically breaking down your sales operation plan from product groups, customer group potentially, and to month, to really bring saying, what products are we gonna do? To what customers are we believing? Are there any priorities within it? 
And we're typically also going from a month to at least a weekly basis. Now, we talked about on the title of this webinar about supply chain planning and being proactive. So this is an ability, if you use this process right, and if you use the tool right, is that basically you can get away from being spending all of your time being reactive to actually, if you go in and have the ability to plan ahead and work on your allocations to so be proactive instead of being completely reactive. So what we're trying to do with our customers is really to move from a reactive much more over to a proactive and actually just use your time to control and to monitor the process as the orders are coming in instead of having to do decision making scheduling and dealing with change and and just hustle hustle all the time to say this is what we're saying and then basically deal within your boundaries because you already know your boundaries so my colleague sashi we we'll now take you a little bit into an overview of the response and supply module of IPP. Again, it's not in depth because I think most of you want to see the actual system and how that works. So, Sashi. Perfect. Thank you, Lars, uh, for the brief introduction. And um, in the next couple of slides, uh, I'll be talking about the processes of the order based planning in uh, comes out of uh, SAP uh, integrated business planning. Uh, for the benefit of the uh, attendees who are new to the IVP world, so uh, IVP is a, a comprehensive solution uh, which enables um, which enables the planning right from the um, sales and operations planning to the order fulfillment. Um, it also brings um, the integration of the data. It supports basically integration of the data from multiple systems. Name it like like you can see uh, like if you want to if you are doing a financial planning in uh, SAC, which is the SAP Analytics for Cloud, or uh, you have an SAP Ariba <clears throat> implemented already. So there, are all the multiple systems apart from the ERP or um, uh, Ariba uh, CRM for the sales opportunities. So which brings an opportunity basically to get all the information to one system where uh, you can consume that and uh, in the entire process, entry and process of chain planning. More to the next slide, Lars. Okay, where does the order based planning fit in the uh, uh, in the SAP integrated business planning? So what our order based planning enables basically organizations is to plan for the availability of right supply at the right location at the right time. So when, when you compare with the planning functions of the, uh, the other planning functions in integrated planning, which uses the time series. So order-based planning uh, falls basically on the uh, in a short-term term view, which is mostly on the weekly at the daily level. And the, the most important feature it comes is it allows you to respond for any changes that comes on a shorter notice. So you can look into the what's happening, what is your supply chain plan constraints, and then you can respond how you can fulfill your customer demand. Next slide, Lars. Okay, so what we are going to talk about in the order-based planning today as a session, so we'll talk about the two steps. So the first step being the calculation of the constraint forecast and then eventually the call are setting your product allocations. And the other one is uh, the sales order confirmations, which, uh, which basically you, you define your ability, how, how you are going to fulfill your customer demand. So the constraint demand, so here the system takes, uh, you can create an allocations and a supply chain plan based upon your prioritized forecast and then also considering your fixed uh, demand requirements basically requirements and receipts along with the target safety stock this is more of a proactive planning which is done at a weekly level and no sales orders are uh, considered as a part of this process so Considering your constraints, looking at what is your prioritized forecast, so it's it's the ability. System gives the ability for you to define how you can uh, fulfill your uh, how best you can fulfill your forecast demand. So one, once this once the constraint forecast is calculation, you can set this constraint forecast as as a product allocations. So which which can also be overridden by a manual adjustments um, uh, to call it as a final. 
next slide last and the second step of the process what we are going to talk about today is the sales order information so having we have the allocations as the first step which comes as an output from the uh, the previous step considering that the and along with the open forecast so system gives the ability for you to um, uh, to determine how best you can fulfill your customer demand. So this is more of a reactive uh, nature planning where you do uh, at, at a, mostly at a daily level. And here you consider the sales orders because you, you start confirming the sales orders as and when they flow in by looking at the open forecast and then do the confirmation run. You also do this, uh, come up with a supply plan and uh, generate uh, confirmations for the sales orders. So this is this basically helps in the two steps where system generate a supply plan as well as allows you to create a uh, response to the, any changes that might arise in the short notice. So these are the two steps which we will witness in the to, today's demo so that uh, my colleague Rafa will um, uh, showcase in the in the um, next half an hour. Um, over to you Rafa. Yes, thank you, Shashi. Uh, I'm gonna show my screen now. Give me a second. Okay. Okay, so then um, for our system demo, what we have, uh, first we're gonna, um, this is uh, our example uh, supply chain uh, that we have for, uh, for our example, um, company standard E, which is a company that produces electric motors. Uh, the headquarters is on the Midwest region of the US. And then we have two distribution centers, these two distribution centers that are gonna you know, provide uh, and supply East and West or all our customers on the East. And so this, is, this will be um, the supply chain that uh, we're gonna work on in our demo. And moving on, um, looking at the master scheduling process, which Lars talked about in, uh, at first, first we're going to uh, run our constraint forecast, which is going to tell us uh, on, the mix, um, on the mix level and on a weekly level uh, our, supply, our supply plan. Then we're going to review the issues, we're going to resolve any issues that we might find, and then we will move to the response management part. Uh, which is the confirmation of a, sale, of a sales order. And this will move from uh, a weekly um, level to a daily level because our sales orders that are coming from our ERP system can be ECC or, or S4 or HANA. Um, they are on a daily level, so we can you know, be an exact, have an exact date for our customers for our confirmation. So then um, I'm gonna switch back uh, to the system. Uh, to start our demo. So I, as a supply planner uh, inside Standard E, uh, first the first thing that we want to check moving from a monthly uh, level and a volume planning level on the SNOP side uh, into the master scheduling process, which is we have to disaggregate into weeks uh, and into a mix level for all our products. Um, we first want to know if there's any problems that might arise, right? Moving from monthly to weekly and from volume to mix. So um, I go, as a supply planner, I go to my dashboard and first I'm gonna check my alerts, right? So here uh, at first I have my chart, which is a shortage chart uh, that has all the alerts if I have any shortages in my plan. So I'm gonna, increase this up so we can see that for example on week 37 so by the way we are in week 34 right now so to to have some visibility ahead we have um to for our alerts we have our uh, alerts on week 37 for shortages which is uh, 75 uh, pieces in shortage we and we have on um, week 38 39 40 and so on so this means uh, here I can see that it's for our product two in our location 2200. So basically I see that I have a problem right now immediately that I have a shortage, a potentially shortage in the upcoming weeks. So uh, to review this, I can go to my next chart 
uh, to try and find the, um, the cost for this, uh, for this shortage. So then I go to my capacity utilization uh, chart. I can see that my resource one, which is where our product two is being produced, it has 100% utilization. So this means that potentially I'm running out of capacity uh, and this is what's causing my, my shortage. So to know, for example, I start on week 37, like we saw, so if I click here, so this is week 37. So if I check week 37 on the capacity utilization uh, chart, and then I drill down to see which products are being produced there. So then I drill down, and then I can see that I have two products being produced there. So obviously, when we run our optimizer, it's competing. Product one and product two are competing for the capacity of resource one. So then product one, for example, it has 52% um, percent of, of utilization and product two is half 40, it, it has 47. So then uh, because our shortage was on product two, so probably here uh, product one is taking more capacity. So the system is not able to deliver product to uh, in, in, in this case. So then um, I can see, so moving or disaggregating from monthly to weekly, I want to check my consensus demand and see how it's behaving in this uh, to see, I mean, what is the cause of the, of the shortages, right? So then I have uh, week 35 and onwards. Uh, I can see that fairly is like increasing in slightly uh, a slightly increasing week 37 and 38 for both products for product one so let me make this bigger so for product one we have uh, a slightly increase on week 37 and 38 also for product two so probably this is also the the, the increase on the consensus demand and the uh, my capacity that it's a that's a it's it's tough then I can see potentially this is what's causing my shortage, right? So then I want to have a, um, a clear picture. Uh, so I want to move to my Excel planning view for the supply review to check uh, this in detail. So then I'm going to move to the supply review uh, planning view. And as you can see, we have here uh, on location 2200, we have our product one and product two. I can see that week 37 and 38 has the slight increase as we saw in the chart. Uh, and I have here, well, I can check my distribution demand, my total demand, the receipt, my total receipts, my forecast constraint, which is what I was able to plan and my projected stock and my projected stock is gonna tell me um, if I have a shortage or not. So if we check product one, we don't have any shortages, but if we go to product two, just like we saw on our chart here, highlighted in red, we have that from week 37 onwards, we have a shortage. Okay, so that's two weeks from today, from, from this week, from this period that we're planning. So what I wanna do is that I know that my uh, capacity is at max. Okay, so I, I'm not able to produce any more in that resource. So that this means that uh, the shortage is coming down on product. So then I'm gonna move to my um, planning view for the capacity so I can check what it's happening. So I have a capacity available of 80 uh, hours per week. And as we can see highlighted in red here, we are topped at 100%. Okay, so I know that uh, if we are topped, uh, at 100% or at maximum capacity, then what I will want to do is that I need to negotiate beforehand, uh, and this is what proactive comes, is I wanna, um, I wanna negotiate uh, with, uh, with the production floor if I can have any overtime uh, or additional capacity that I can expand so I'm able to accommodate this this um this slight increase in demand which is causing my uh my shortages so obviously uh because 
the time that uh, from production that I want to go into 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 my uh, distribution center, uh, the time to get the product to get there, I cannot plan on week 37 and 38, which is where um, my shortage uh, starts. Um, I can't increase there because then um, it won't be enough time to deliver the product in time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand, assuming that I already uh, know that uh, that uh, the production floor can accommodate, uh, for example, eight hours on a Saturday, an additional uh, eight hours on Saturday for two weeks. So I can expand this and and um, and, and be able to accommodate uh, all my demand. Then I want to do it. Uh, I want to offset that by one week. So then uh, the shortage starts on week 37. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase uh, my capacity in weeks 37, which is um, uh, one week before, and on week 30, 36 and 37. Sorry. So then uh, moving forward, my uh, production it's able to meet my my uh, my capacity. So then I'm going to increase to 88 um for my capacity a week uh which is eight hours uh additional on a saturday then i'm gonna save the data is my capacity and then what i'm gonna do is that i'm gonna run again so i want to let my system figure it out and see if i can resolve my shortages moving so i'm gonna go to the application jobs I'm gonna run from here my constraint forecast run. I put my process in, and then I run. Okay, so while this is running, let me uh, we can check uh, how the run goes uh, here on the status. Okay, I can see here on the status that it's still running. Okay, so I can hit refresh and see. Um, how the status is going for uh, and when it finished. So now it's finished. Uh, so I can go back. So first I'm gonna go back to the supply review, planning view, and then I'm gonna refresh. So I have here my uh, highlighted in red, my, my uh, the shortages that I have. Then I hit refresh. Then let's see how the system plans and if it gets rid of those uh, shortages. So now, as you can see, uh, there's no more shortages. There's no um, uh, uh, negative quantity on the stock projected, uh, and there's no highlighting in red. So this means that the system took care of the shortages from product two that we were seeing uh, at first. Now, I want to go back to the capacity review. And on my capacity review, I want to refresh and see how the capacity works, the consumption, to see if I'm effectively using those eight hours or if I need more or I need less, right? So then I can see here that on week 37, uh, 36 and 37, which I increased my capacity, I can see that now my consumption is at 88%. Exactly, and then I'm at 100%. So this means that I'm I'm uh, effectively using my capacity, and uh, um, that I that I just negotiated to get to to get rid of the um, of the shortages and not have you know additional capacity that is unused or I'm falling short, right? So then I uh, this is this is I can tell that this is my the, the right decision. So then I'm going to go back to my dashboard because I want to refresh and see how this looks like um, now that I, that I run and make my, my adjustment. So then as we can see, there is no data here for the shortage. So because this chart just shows you uh, when an alert pops up. So when there's no alerts, obviously there's no data to be shown. So there's, uh, there's, uh, I can see that I got uh, rid of the, um, of the, uh, of the shortages. I can see that I'm effectively um, maxing up my capacity at 100%, and 
and well, my consensus demand remains the same. So I can accommodate it slightly, uh, this slight increase in demand there. So then, um, so then uh, for this, uh, we just resolved our capacity issues uh, by negotiating and proactively negotiating because now I have the visibility ahead that I can, that I'm gonna run into problems in the future, right? So then I can negotiate beforehand to be to be uh, to resolve these issues or these uh, shortages, and now for now I'm um, I'm good with my supply plan moving from um, volume to mix, right? So then the next step uh, in in uh, in my supply plan, then I'm gonna move to the response part. Now I'm gonna plan my sales orders. I want to see that for this supply that I just planned how the sales orders uh, are consuming and how the sales orders get converted. So to do that, I have to release the allocations. So everything that I plan on the supply part, which is this one, I'm gonna release it into the allocations I'm allocating, which is available. So the response part can see those allocations and start assigning all this supply that I just planned to my sales orders and my customers. So to do that, I'm gonna run a copy operator, which is gonna copy my constraint forecast into the product allocations that I need. Okay, so then I will put my filter in next, and then I'm gonna run. Okay, while this is running, I'm gonna move to my confirmation planning view. So this is my confirmation planning view. And as, as we move from supply to the response part, um, this is from weekly to a daily level. So everything that, it, that we will that uh, we plan weekly on the supply side, uh, then I'm gonna disaggregate it into days so I can see the exact date for uh, the sales orders to be confirmed and whatever is available in the supply on a daily level. Uh, and not at a weekly level. So we're gonna move uh, even further into more detail into a daily level here. So here, for example, in this planning view, I have the forecast constraint, which is my forecast that it was disaggregated into days for every day of the week. We have our sales orders requested. And then here I can see um, the quantity of all my sales orders per day, right? So moving all my sales orders from the ERP side into um, into IDP, then I can see, for example, here, uh, this is my sales orders requested in the week 37 and 38 that we were checking where we had problems on the supply side. Uh, and here, I on the sales orders requested, I can see highlighted in red, the ones that are over my forecast, that the quantity is it's exceeding my forecast. Why do I need this is because I forecasted some amount, but then when the sales orders come in, the real, this is real demand comes in, then I can see if there's going to be a potential problem because the quantity is exceeding, right? Then I will have my forecast open, which is uh, the difference between the, uh, the, the consumption. This is uh, sales orders are con uh, doing the consumption for my forecast. And then what is remaining is my forecast open. I will have my forecast constraint, which is what I planned on the supply side with the optimizer. And then I will have my allocations, right? This is um, the allocations are what, uh, what is available in that day for the sales orders to consume. So I'm gonna check uh, that the copy operator uh, ended, uh, finished. So now it says it's finished. I'm gonna refresh. And then to check that everything runs smoothly or the release was okay, I want to check that uh, my forking constraint in my allocation quantity is exactly the same. So if I can see, I, I'm going to move back a little bit. So I can see, for example, here, that is exactly the same. Also, in the weeks that I have, that I had my problem before, I can see that it's exactly the same. So we're copying um, so if we go to product two, for example, we have here that the forecast constraint is exactly uh, the same as my allocations. 
Okay, so now that I just release my allocations to the, the response side, now um, uh, as a response planner, then I want to run my confirmation. So I want to see uh, um, how the sales orders get confirmed and what happens when I have this kind of problem, right? Let's see how the system will plan this. So then I'm go back to my application jobs. I'm gonna run my confirmation run. I put the filter in, I hit next, and then I run. Now my confirmation is running. I wanna see what the system does at this level. So I'm gonna check the status. I'm gonna monitor. So this, obviously we are running this, um, you can run it on demand, but this, um, when we go into an implementation, this runs automatically on the background. So when you get uh, to your, um, you start your, your, your work, then you just go and review all the exceptions and alerts that we have there and start um, analyzing, right? So then I'm gonna refresh. And then now we see it's finished. So uh, before, um, then I'm gonna refresh this um, to see how uh, my planning view to see how the system planned all of this. So then I'm gonna refresh. Okay, so then now I can see, I mean, uh, I have alerts here so they can remind us where our potential problems. So I wanna check that for example, this Sales orders that are requested that are over that the forecast that I that I um, that I planned beforehand, I can see here. For example, I have uh, this uh, key figures for the sales orders confirmed in time, sales orders confirmed late, and the sales orders unfulfilled. So here I can see that um, I have in the sales orders confirmed late, I have three highlighted in orange. Here I have 55. Uh, of quantity on uh, the 21st of September. I have 60 on the 22nd and another 60 on the 23rd. So this means that obviously my allocation wasn't enough. Okay, if I can see what is consumed, everything has consumed. Um, there's no allocation remaining. This is the quantity of my sales orders uh, confirmed in time and this is what it's confirmed late. So I know that I'm that the system obviously says that uh, this have to be this much quantity have to be confirmed late because there's not enough supply for this, right? So I can go to um, uh, to my confirmations app from here to see uh, how it looks like, right? So then I go to this button for the confirmations here on the planning view. So then I hit this button. Um, I go into the web um, interface. I can select, for example, um, uh, the view that I already have here. Okay, and then I'm gonna expand this to see what how it looks like, right? So uh, in my planning view, I can see overall where the problems are coming. Uh, in quantity, but here I see the sales orders specifically which ones are being delayed and which ones are being confirmed. So here on my sales orders, for example, I have the order number. This order number is the one that comes from the ECC side when we are transferring all my sales orders into uh, my IDP. Obviously, my order number is right here. Okay, I can see which order number I can relate to. This is my customer, the, 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 um, the material, and then I have my confirmed uh, percentage, right? And here clearly I can see which ones are 100% uh, and which ones are delayed, which are the ones that we just saw. So I'm gonna condense this a little more. I'm gonna hide the periods. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sort this out so I can see all the ones that are that are um, being delayed. So then I have it all 
in the same, um, so I can review the, uh, at the same time. So I can see that my my request dates, which is 20, the 21st, 22nd, and 23rd, and I can see here the delays. So I have a delay of one day. For this one, I have a delay of five days. And here you can see where the confirmation date comes, right? And I can say to my customer, okay, I have to delay this, and then um, this is the confirmed date um, uh, that I'm gonna that I'm gonna confirm your your sales order. So I have a delay of five days and four days respectively for the quantities that we just saw on, on my planning view right here. Okay, so now um, I know that uh, this is um, obviously that this customer 51 is the lowest priority because I put my priorities on, on, on my confirmation run. And then the, the system obviously will assign first, will confirm what is available for your priority customers, and then it goes to a low priority. So for this low priority customer, it's going to be delayed. So what can I do to do to 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 resolve this issue? So then uh, I'll go back to the confirmation. Okay, I can see here that uh, um, that I from the supply side, I know that product one and product two are sharing the same capacity, right? So then I wanna see on a daily level what the capacity looks like. So then I'm gonna move into the capacity review. I'm going to this sheet, which is the detail, the detailed capacity review, which is by day. So I'm gonna review on those, on those uh, periods, how the capacity looks like. So, so it was uh, the problem I had on the 21st, 22nd and 23rd. I see that 52% uh, um, it's assigned uh, of capacity for product one and 47% is assigned um, to product two, which is 8.3 hours and 7.6 hours respectively here. So now um, I see, I, I, I wanna check how now the sales orders look like in the consumption of my allocations looks like for product two. I know the product one, I have a problem, but on product two, I have to check how it looks like, right? So then if I scroll down, I go back to my confirmation review uh, planning view. I wanna focus on where I have the problem here. And on product two, I can see that um, my forecast constraint is 300, but uh, the sales orders only comes into 200, which, my forecast open um, in my allocations, for example, I can see how does the, the product is burning my allocations, the burn rate that it goes uh, into the future. So proactively, I can see how it's consuming those allocations. So I can see here, obviously, it's going to be consumed only 200. And then I have allocation remain at about 100, okay, on the next periods, which let me know, or, or I can think that I don't need for the capacity that I just saw, I can probably spare some allocation or um, uh, take some of the capacity that product two is using and shift it into product one. Okay, so I can, so, so, so maybe I can check that I can, that I can um, accommodate the sales orders or this, this additional uh, quantity of the sales orders by taking capacity from product two, which is, um, uh, it's more than I need, right? So then what I wanna do here is that uh, in my allocations adjusted, I can allow, uh, allocate a little less in this period. For example, I can make this 200, adjusted to 200 in these three periods, which is exactly what I need for uh, the product two. And then on product one, I can increase my allocations. So I get 520, exactly what, I'm, uh, what my sales, sales orders are requesting. Okay, and then I can save the data. So what, what, what this means is that what I'm trying to do is that I already uh, have overtime or additional capacity that I um, negotiated on the supply side. But here, what I wanna do is that judging by, by the product to the, the capacity that it's taking 
and product one and that I need more and on product two I have more than enough I want to I want to see if I can shift that capacity and take from product two and put it on product one so I can resolve these issues on the sales orders and not have to you know have a, a, a delay for that customer and if I can accommodate um, uh, for all customers and have a hundred percent right so then what I want to do then after I save my adjustments, I'm going to go and run the, the confirmation run again to see how the system is going to plan that. So here proactively, I'm, I'm, I'm ahead of time. I'm going to see or I'm telling the system, okay, this is all the adjustments that I want to do so I can shift uh, capacity and see if that uh, will resolve my, my, my delays, right? So I will let the system uh, run the algorithm and check all the capacity issues. So now I can see that, I, uh, that it's finished. Now let's see what the system does. And I'm gonna refresh here to see if, uh, how the situation looks like. So then when I refresh, I can see that, for example, now I have exactly what the sales orders are requesting. This is what it's confirmed in time. Now I don't see any sales orders confirmed late uh, um, with a with a orange highlight. And then if I scroll down to product two, I can see that everything is tied down to 200, right? Everything is confirmed in time in 200. So now I'm gonna go back to uh, my um, capacity review, sheet the detailed capacity. And if we remember, we have 52% uh, planned around 52 for product one and 47 on this resource one, right? So I'm gonna refresh to see how the system shifted that capacity so I can allocate a little bit more. So then now we changed, now it says I have, now it's allocating 56, percent and 50 percent respectively on these three periods where i had a problem and it's taking from 47 to 45 and 43 around 43. this means that i have um uh nine hours and eight hours respectively for product one and then this reduced to seven hours and eight hours respectively for this period um so now uh i can see that um this works um, I shifted, I was successfully, I, I shifted the, the capacity in this resource from product two to product one to accommodate the sales orders. So now if I go back to my confirmations uh, on, the, um, on the web UI, then I'm going to refresh here. And then I can see that now there is no uh, sales orders that are delayed. So I'm gonna do this the whole sorting again to see if there's any more um, uh, delays or something, and I can see that everything it's now confirmed at 100%. So then now I I know that by checking the burn rate uh, I can adjust these allocations and potentially I can shift capacity from one product to the other in the same resource so I can accommodate uh, the confirmations and uh, on, on my sales source, right? So uh, this is the end of our demo. So I'm going to go back to the presentation. So now uh, what we just did um, uh, in our system. So uh, for order-based planning, uh, first, on the supply side, going from uh, mix, to, uh, sorry, going for volume to mix and for um, a monthly level to a weekly level, I run my constraint forecast uh, using the optimizer. So the optimizer is going to check my capacity and see what can accommodate, and it will tell me immediately what is uh, if I run into any problem. So then I have my alerts to highlight the potential disruptions, which is uh, my charts and the highlights on, on, the, on my planning views. I do my manual adjustments to resolve those disruptions. I did it and then I run again and I see that everything, uh, it's, it's complete. Uh, now, 
uh, then moving from weekly to um, moving moving from weekly to daily for the response part, I got my sales orders that I just integrated from ERP. Uh, this this demo uh, um, is connected to an ECC system, but it can be connected also to an S4 system. And then uh, we transfer all my sales orders. I run my confirmation. I check. Uh, when I'm going to run into problems in the future, then I can adjust, run again, and then resolve those issues proactively instead of just going into, into, uh, into that day specifically and then have to be reactive. So proactively, I'm doing uh, all my adjustments to see how it will work out in the future. Um, uh, we didn't cover the sales order simulation, but it's also a sales order simulation can come in. You can simulate it, how it will impact your system. But because of time, we couldn't uh, put it on, on, on today's demo. Um, but we can also uh, run a simulation for sales order and see how it impacts and do a comparison, right? So uh, this is what we did on our demo. This is the end uh, of our live demo. And now I'm going to turn um, to Shashi. Uh, and Lars, to um, I think we have uh, some questions from the audience that we can um, address and um, and answer. Shashi? Good. <clears throat> so I think uh, the first question that we got is um, how can we send the data to ERP or S for HANA to get the orders created in the system? Okay, let me take that. Um, so there's um, obviously, uh, how can we do that? There's uh, the SDI, the smart data integration, uh, which is that the one that works for order-based planning. Uh, and as, as you move all your master data and your transaction data from ERP into the IDP system, at the same time when you run all your supply planning and all your, and all your confirmations, there is a process that you can send back that information into the ERP. And naturally, all the transaction data, including the confirmations from your sales orders, will go back into the ERP system and get created uh, to further processing for, for the execution um, uh, of those transaction data. So, um, Production, production orders, uh, stock transfer orders, uh, the confirmation status on your sales orders, all of that, it goes back uh, with the SDI integration. And you can just, um, uh, when it's installed, uh, you can put um, custom information or custom uh, fields that you want in there. If you don't have any custom fields, they're the standard ones that got in they flow just as smoothly as um, uh, seamlessly as, as as just installing and then running uh, the process to write back the IDP into the ERP system. So it's just a process that you run from IDP or you can schedule it and then it will run that process and immediately it's going to be uh, created on the ERP system. Okay. Um, second question, the confirmation date, does it represent the fulfillment date? Yes. So the confirmation date, uh, if it's confirmed in time, obviously, it's, uh, it's going to, you know, confirm your, your, um, the whole quantity if it's 100%. But in the system, depending on, on your settings, um, it can be, or depending on your process, is that the system can partially fulfill uh, um, an, an order, a sales order, and then, you know, complete it, uh, uh, confirm it 100% on a later date, or just like we saw, is that we can, the delay will tell you when exactly the system or your uh, um, production is able to supply that sales order in full. So, you can have it in full, you can have uh, partial deliveries, and also, if in your process you, you don't uh, allow for partial uh, fulfillment or partial confirmation, then the, the, the sales order gets uh, unfulfilled if there's not able to confirm it 
at 100%, right? So it depends on how the process goes. But yes. And of course, uh, also, uh, it depends on the income terms that, that, you, that you have with your customers and it also depends if you have uh, the data for, for lead time, so also the transportation time to the customer in there. If you do not, not have that, it's probably the more the shipping date when it's actually been shipped out. So it also depends on, on the master data that you have maintained. Yes, that's correct. Um, then, sorry, hold on to the third question. I think that's probably also um, uh, uh, the last one. Um, the manual adjustments. Uh, so confirmation to sorry, and also the manual adjustment can be automated somehow as a recommendation of the system. So um, any any answer on on any manual adjustments in in the system? So basically, uh, well, um, manual adjustments obviously is to go and if you see a problem, then you do those manual adjustments to correct that problem. So uh, the system. Uh, won't give you a recommendation for the manual adjustments that you have to do because it it involves too many variables, right? You have to check your capacity, you have to check the burn rate of the of the of your allocations for products that are that are uh, competing for capacity, so you can you know do that do those adjustments. So so the system is not gonna recommend what you should do. Uh, as a recommendation, but it, but for example, all the custom alerts and all the custom um, uh, charts and dashboards that you get, it will give you a complete picture, so you know exactly what you what you can do to resolve those issues. Pinpoint exactly where the issue is, and then make the adjustments according to where exactly the problem is. So, and, and yes. Sorry to jump in, Rafa. And there is no one solution for every problem as well, because whenever we identify there is an exception and the uh, planner need to intervene there. So that's basically uh, with the manual intelligence, what the planner brings in and with the uh, information what he has, he chooses like, for example, whether to increase the shift or maybe like, okay, outsource it. So these are the decisions so that need to be taken by the planner. So, so the manual adjustments are that need to be done uh, by a planner uh, and not that something can be automated. I would say it's it's a very interesting question. I think that's also why we're definitely also taking that question because uh, that the system will make recommendations. I think right now and today it's going to be a bit of a um, say difficult. Is the future going then in that way where the system will make the uh, recommendation based on past uh, resolutions? Um, uh, of, of, of a problem, so basically learning from uh, the corrective measures from the past. Um, I think that's definitely the future and probably also in the direction where um, the software in, in, in planning is, is going in some sort of a way. So I have to look at the actual roadmap for, for IBP if that's doing something, otherwise there's other technologies that can be that, that could be used uh, for something like that. So the question is is relevant. I think also in the future it will be possible in some way uh, that it actually uh, that we can ask the system to learn from the corrective measures being done in the past and through that actually make recommendations. Yes. Good. Okay. I think we're we're running out a little bit out of, out of time. Definitely, so. Yeah. Um, uh, I, we, we've seen that there are several other questions. I think what we will do is that we will try and answer those uh, those questions and send out to the to the participants uh, so that you can uh, you can get an answer from uh, from our side. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. I would say, um, Sachin, I think uh, uh, you would now take over maybe just to to wrap up the um, uh, the actual webinar since we have another five minutes. Absolutely, Lars. Yeah, can you move on to the next slide? Okay, so how can we help you? I mean, how the Western Acker can help you basically for your transformation journey. So we, we can uh, help you with an inspiration day and uh, we can also help you to build the business case uh, so which you can um, use for 
um, hearing okay uh, what the value drivers that bring to the table for implementing the solution and then we can also help you with the uh, proof of concept and and of course uh, we will help you to implement the process as well so if, if you are starting the journey so uh, with the transformation journey so we can uh, handhold with all these steps what we think these are essential and uh, with 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 that basically i think we will ask you to stay Take the first step of the inspiration day. More to the next slide, Lars. So, what exactly is inspiration day? So, for all the customers in this call, uh, we have an offer um, that's a free of charge uh, IBP inspiration day. So, that's a four-hour session where you get an opportunity to uh, gather all relevant leaders and specialists for an uh, interactive and inspirational workshop. In this workshop, what we do is basically we will first understand your uh, current situation and we will share our uh, lessons learned. Uh, we, are, we have a series of lessons learned uh, based on our past implementation experiences and, and through our studies and then as well as with through our influencers. So we will we'll also do a demonstration of the process steps in the IBP and uh, finally will help you to define your future high level goals uh, for the system implementations so the customers who are interested in this call please feel free to reach out uh, to the contacts in the next page uh, we can uh, uh, we can uh, basically we can decide and find out a suitable date and time and we will be very happy to conduct uh, the workshop on your premises all right thank you everyone thank you guys bye bye